Okay, in this video and today we're going to talk about how to get your IRS levy released. What is an IRS levy? Well, really a levy is a legal seizure of your property or your rights to property to satisfy your tax debt. When the IRS seizes or levies your property, it will be sold to help pay your tax debt. If your paycheck is garnished, which is called a wage levy, or your bank account is seized, which is a bank levy, uh, the money will be taken and applied to your tax debt. In understanding this process, there really is no legal difference between seizure and levy. That's important to understand. Now, before the IRS can seize your paycheck, bank account, or other property, they're going to need to send you a notice. It's called a notice of intent to levy and notice of your right to hearing. There is, the letter in this notice will also say final notice at the top. It'll probably be a CP90 if they're going to take some assets or a CP297 if they're going to levy certain payments or your wages. Now, when you get that letter, you have 30 days from the date on that notice to pay your tax debt in full, set up a payment plan uh, with the IRS, or request what's called a collection due process hearing. If you don't act within that 30-day period, then the IRS can move forward and seize your property without further notice. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to that 30-day notice. There are certain situations when the IRS is not required to give you that 30-day notice before taking your property. It includes if the IRS believes that uh, collecting that tax is in jeopardy, uh, if they believe that they're going to seize your state tax refund, if you're a federal contractor uh, and owe IRS taxes, or in certain situations where you might have a, a small business and you have unpaid employment taxes, they don't have to give you a 30-day notice. They can just take uh, your assets uh, and your bank accounts. Now what can the IRS seize or levy? Well they could take your wages, your salary, your commissions, uh, they could seize your bank account, brokerage account, and other financial assets. They can take a portion of your social security check and other federal retirement payments. They can seize your house, your car, other property, any property that you have uh, and own an interest in or uh, have rights to. Now, wages, salary, and commissions. If the IRS seizes or levies your wages, salary, or commissions, they're going to serve that levy on the individual business or organization uh, that is paying you, and that levy is going to stay in force for every payment you receive from that person or that entity until the IRS issues a release of that levy. Now, how much of, the, of your money can they take? Well, the IRS can take everything from uh, your pay except a specific amount that is exempt. It's not uncommon for people to see the IRS take as much as 80 or 90 percent of their pay. Now, if the IRS is going to seize your financial accounts or your bank accounts, they're going to serve that levy on the financial institution where the account is located. The financial institution is going to hold those funds in trust for 21 days to resolve any potential disputes as to the actual ownership of the account. After 21 days, the financial institution is going to forward those funds that they seized to the IRS. Now, this type of levy is a one-time seizure of funds available in the financial account on the day the levy was served. So the IRS must issue additional levies each time they want to seize those funds. Now, your Social Security and federal payments. If the IRS seizes or levies your Social Security or other federal government payments, it's going to go through a program called the Federal Payment Levy Program. And they could take anywhere between 15% and 100% of your payment, depending on what type of federal payment that you're receiving. The levy only has to be issued once, and it's a continual levy on every payment you receive, just like if they were to levy your wages, salary, and commissions uh, with your employer, and it's going to stay in force until the IRS issues a release of that levy. Now, your house, car, and other property. If the IRS seizes or levies your house, car, or other property, they're going to sell your interest in that property and apply the proceeds to your tax debt. Of course, they're going to take out cost of the sale and uh, any interest that others might have in the property has to be satisfied, such as if you still have a mortgage that's owed to the bank on a house. Uh, the IRS will calculate a minimum bid price and you'll be permitted a brief opportunity to challenge their fair market valuation before the property is submitted to public auction. 
Okay, and after the property is sold and all costs paid and any uh, other interests are satisfied and your tax debt is paid in full, if there's anything left after the sale of that property, then you would actually get a refund of those remaining proceeds. Now, how is the IRS going to release a levy? Well, generally, the IRS will release or stop a levy when the tax you paid, uh, the tax you owe is paid in full. Uh, the period for collection uh, has expired, which is usually 10 years from the date of assessment. Uh, if that was expired prior to them issuing a levy, um, if you set up a payment plan with the IRS, or uh, if the levy is creating an economic hardship. Now, a word about this economic hardship. Uh, before going any further, we need to clarify uh, what this means. It's almost a laughable concept, uh, really, because there are too many people that can bear 80 to 90 percent of their paycheck being seized and not have an economic hardship. I don't care how much money you make. If 80 or 90 percent of it's being taken from you, you're going to have an economic hardship. So economic hardship really means it prevents you from meeting uh, or being able to meet basic, reasonable living expenses. Now, this can create an argument with the IRS as to what is basic and reasonable because lifestyles and circumstances can vary greatly. Now, other reasons that the IRS might release a levy or uh, if the uh, levy was exempt, uh, the property that the levy was issued against is exempt from seizure, uh, if it was done prematurely, if uh, they did not notify you or the, the required notice was not actually sent to you. Uh, if the levy was issued while you're in a bankruptcy and the automatic stay is in effect, then they'll release the levy. Uh, where ex the expenses of actually seizing and selling the property that they levy would be greater than the fair market value, then they're not gonna they're gonna release the levy because they're not gonna receive any proceeds from it. Uh, if a payment plan is in in place or a, a request for an innocent spouse relief or offering compromise is under consideration or actually uh, in effect, then they would release the levy. There's also uh, during certain appeals processes or tax court proceedings when the IRS will actually release the levy as well. Now returning seized property, the IRS might actually return your seized property uh, if the seizure was premature, if the seizure was in violation of the law, if uh, returning uh, the seized property is actually going to help the IRS collect your debt, uh, if you enter into a payment plan or installment agreement with the IRS and the payment plan specifically does not allow them to levy, then they will return your seized property. Uh, if the IRS didn't follow their proper procedures, uh, they'll return your seized property. And if it's in your best interest and the best interest of the government, uh, they will also return your seized property. Now, economic damages. If the IRS made a seizure or levy in error, uh, or the IRS uh, intentionally failed to follow their own internal revenue law, or the IRS was negligent, or if they wrongfully seized your property, meaning that you're not the taxpayer that actually owes the IRS money, then you also could be entitled to recover some economic damages that you suffered by them uh, seizing or levying your assets, bank account, property, wages in error. Now there's an important thing about timing and some other notices. If you receive an intent to levy <coughs> excuse me, notice from the IRS, you need to take immediate action because there's a very limited window in which you can act to preserve all your rights in full. For whatever reason, if you fail to act within that time frame, uh, all is not lost. You can still take advantage of certain uh, options that are available to you that can miti uh, you know, mitigate or uh, lessen any damage provided you act quickly. Some notices, such as a CP 504, are going to indicate an intent to levy, but do not specify your right to a hearing. These noti notices can actually be a precursor to a more serious notice, and if you act on those, you can get a head start uh, in this process to resolving your problem. Now, <clears throat> anytime you're dealing with a situation where the IRS is taking your money, taking your bank account, taking your wages, taking your property, or threatening to do so, 
uh, it's always a good idea to get some professional advice. So just for watching this video, you're entitled to a free consultation uh, to talk about your specific situation and to get some advice that's going to apply to your circumstances. So if you're unsure about your situation and you want a professional opinion, uh, to take advantage of this free consultation, just visit the Lazat Law Group at getllg.com. There's going to be a tab right there on the page. Click on that tab that says free, no risk, no obligation consultation. Uh, and we'll schedule an appointment to discuss your options. Now this is going to be a phone consultation so you can be located anywhere in the United States and its territories.